Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin. Today we're going to be taking a look at the cheesy meatball from Tears of the Kingdom. Now in the game, the recipe only has three things. Cheese, rice, and prime meat. So we're going to go ahead and make a video game accurate version by first heating up the cheese in a pan, then it slightly melt, and then toasting the rice inside the cheese. I'm not sure if this is how Link actually does it in the game, but we only have three ingredients to work with, so this is how I'm going to do it. With the fat that does melt out of the cheese, that's going to be used to sear the beef in. This is a nice chunk of prime beef. Now we're going to sear on all the sides and also season the entire thing with a small pinch of rock salt. Now what's cool is that this cheese is kind of turning this rice into a mini rice cheese burrito. Now before this gets too burnt, I'm going to exit this little cheese rice burrito onto a plate and finish searing off this beef. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the cheesy meatball from Tears of the Kingdom, video game accurate. Let's go ahead and give this rice cheesy thing a taste. Okay, that is definitely still raw rice. A little too crunchy, does that count if you can't actually bite through the thing? I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not edible. How about the beef? Hey, tastes like steak? Can't complain, nothing wrong with that. However, we should probably still make a version of this dish that resembles the picture in the game. So, to start we're gonna first make a Mornay sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and grate two cups of Jarlsberg cheese, a nice melting cheese. And also one cup of Gouda. Once that's done, we're gonna go to the stove and melt a quarter cup of butter in a small saucepan. In goes a quarter cup of flour, stir it to make a little roux paste, and following that, we're gonna slowly stream in two cups of whole milk, just a little bit at a time. To make sure that there's no lumps, you have to add this in basically tiny stages, whisking in between each one. Once that has come together, we're gonna add in our three cups of cheese and whisk until it is slightly thick and slightly gooey. This gets seasoned with a little bit of salt and pepper and set aside for later. Because this is a gourmet cheesy meatball, we're gonna have to use some pretty high-end meat. I opted for some nice prime short ribs, which are first gonna take off the bone. These are going to get delicately sliced into nice half-inch chunks, laid out, and seasoned with some rock salt. To cook these, these require nothing but a large cast iron pan, a little bit of oil, and some flour. I'm giving this a nice sear for about two minutes on each side until they're nice and brown and seasoning with a little bit of extra rock salt in the pan as needed. Once this exits the pan, we're gonna go and use a cleaner pan and make a quick little glaze for the beef. In Tears of the Kingdom, you can find coarser beet honey lying around sometimes, so we managed to go and forage some of that and goes a little bit into a pan until it boils and in goes our beef. Coating that and reducing the honey until it gives the beef a nice thin glaze. Now, there's a lot of little scraps and bones from all that short rib trimming and I don't want that to go to waste, so I'm going to show you a little thing that I like to do with all this leftover. Onto a tray lined with a rack, I'm going to place all of these bones and bits, season them with some rock salt again, and put them in an oven at 375 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now, with the remaining flavor left in this pan, I'm going to make a little sauce for our rib bits in the oven. There honestly is no real measurement. I like to go with equal parts rice vinegar, soy sauce, and honey. This gets stirred for about 5 minutes at a medium high heat until it starts to reduce, and in goes directly our nice baked meat bits from the oven. A lot of fat and juice has rendered out from these little short rib bites, and I want to make sure that we can infuse that back in and let them absorb this nice sauce we have here. So these just kind of get stirred until the sauce reduces to a very thick glaze, to which we're going to take them off the heat and serve them immediately on a bed of nice shiso leaves, sprinkled with a little bit of sesame seeds and well, this is a little quick version of sweet and sour ribs essentially. Works pretty much every time to get rid of those scraps and make something delicious out of it, because there's some really good meat on there. But now we return to the main event. In a bowl, we are going to pile a generous helping of fluffed up short grain rice that we have cooked in a rice cooker. Then we're going to arrange our little glazed beef slices in a little pattern, trying to resemble a rose of sorts until we can no longer stack it up. The Mornay sauce gets spooned delicately over the top, trying to fill the cracks but show off some of that beef. And the dish in the game seems to have a little char on the edges, so we're going to take a blowtorch and broil our Mornay sauce with the flame just until we see a little bit of browning. To garnish, we're finishing with what seems like red chili threads and a little bit of scallion on top. Flanking the back end of this dish is a few shiso leaves to provide color and posture, I guess. And I present to you our version of the gourmet cheesy meatball from Tears of the Kingdom. And I've been waiting to eat this all day, so here we go. This. I rate this dish 30 out of 30 hearts. I was a bit curious to see how the honey would go with the beef and the cheese, but if you really think about it, it goes with both. This is probably unnecessary to say, but this entire dish was demolished by our studio team. While they are taking a nap from this food coma, I think I'm going to make some more meat arrows. 